The mechanics of the takeover are already in, in operation. Now Defense Secretary McNamara and McGeorge Bundy are briefing him in such terms as mega deaths. White House and Pentagon shorthand for the millions of deaths which are now in the hands of President Lyndon Johnson. Here is a man who spent eight years as, uh, as press secretary for President Eisenhower and uh, is uh, used to the precautions taken by, uh, for the president's safety. And uh, he is Jim Haggerty, now vice president of uh, ABC Paramount. Well, well Don, uh, as I said a little earlier, I think this, like the Puerto Rican attempt uh, in, Blair, in front of Blair House in 1950, uh, has to be a planned conspiracy. Uh, kill the president. How many shots had been fired with, from the rifle? Three. Seat? Have you been able to trace the rifle? Do you know where no, it was purchased? No, we're attempting to do that at this time. Is there any connection yet between this and the firing of Major General Walker? I do not know. From Dallas, Texas, the first comment from former Major General Edwin Walker, who, as one of the more vocal right-wing leaders in the United States, he said that the death of Mr. Kennedy is not as surprising as it is tragic. This prepared statement he handed to newsmen from his Dallas home said this, the tragic events of yesterday demonstrate the internal threat that can never be underestimated. Do you expect a confession from this man? No. I think it's sufficient. What is the evidence that links into the gun? I don't care to go into the evidence. No, I don't know how long the other man What type of establishment? Got to the other side of town. Is there anything no. that can become up of that? Did he get over by a bus, by a car? He I, I don't know. Uh, we have heard that uh, he was picked up by a Negro in a car. That is not confirmed? No, it's not confirmed as far as I know. Are you looking for the Negro? We would like to know about him. If he, if this is, if this is so, we would certainly like to find him. Chief Do you Curry, could you detail for us what led you to Oswald? Not exactly, except... Uh, in the building, we... Uh, so this, this must have been a, a very carefully planned, uh, terrible tragedy uh, and conspiracy. Why, why did you decide to try this personally yourself? Well, I generally try the major cases, and I believe this will be classed as a major case. And he was going to be, uh, I would imagine, as it would. <laughs> Where any slugs found? 145 slug. It was found on the south side of Elm Street. Outside? Outside on the grass. And when we got down there, near this cover, we were standing there yet, and I looked down. Manhole cover? Manhole cover, and I saw this piece of dirt raised up like a ground mole would, but it didn't go down. It went in the, across the ground, mm -hmm. under it. Mm -hmm. And I bent over. And I traced it for several foot back, and a policeman appeared and traced it with me, and I said, what in the world is this? It's like a ground mole hole, but I've never seen one so long. Mm -hmm. And he says, that's where a bullet went through. And it traveled quite a ways back, but it did not come out of the ground. I said, well, it didn't come out, and he said, no, it's still in there. And as we turned around to go back to the curb to see where it had come from, there was a nick there in the curb. And just then, all the motorcycles came at one time underneath, from underneath 183. Your Honest, when you tried to let the FBI know that, mm -hmm. of what you saw? That wasn't until July when they were trying to pick up evidence. Mm -hmm. And uh, we thought maybe ours did, might be a little bit of help. Did they try? Uh, were they very interested in? No. And what you had to say? And no. It was just kind of matter of fact. They don't, we don't care whether you can And that. after you gave your statement, what did they try to tell you uh, as an explanation for what you saw? 
that it was pieces of bone mm -hmm. from the skull of the president. Mm -hmm. And I told him I did not believe that a bone could do all of that. Journalist Richard Dudman spotted a police officer and a deputy sheriff. An agent joins them. He removes a bullet and pockets it. Okay, and according to your Warren Commission testimony, uh, you saw where a shot had hit the turf on the south side of Elm Street? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and you said that the shot had caught the manhole cover at the corner? The concrete of the manhole cover, yes. Okay. That afternoon, after Officer Tippett was killed, they took a suspect into custody. And uh, I, got, I was thinking about this man getting away from me. Well, this and was I, the man that got into the Green Rambler. The Green Rambler. And I called Captain Fritz at his office and gave him a description of the man I saw get into the Rambler. And uh, he told me, and I quote him, it sounds like the suspect we have in custody. Come on up and take a look at him. So I went out and got in my unmarked car and drove to the uh, city hall, went directly to Captain Fritz's office. And uh, we went into Captain Fritz's inner office. And uh, the man was sitting in a chair behind a desk. And there was another gentleman. I assumed he was one of Fritz's people because he had the white cowboy hat on, which was the trademark at that time of the Dallas uh, Homicide Bureau. And Fritz turned to me and said, is this the man you saw? And I said, yes. And it was. It was. So he turned to the suspect and he said, this man saw you leave. At which time the suspect became a little excited. And he said, I told you people I did. And Fritz said, now take it easy, son, talking to the suspect. He said, we're just trying to find out what happened here. He said, what about the car? I didn't say station wagon. He said, what about the car? At which time the suspect leaned forward and put both hands up on the desk and said, that station wagon belongs to Mrs. Payne. Don't try to drag her into this. Then he leaned back and very disgustedly said, everybody will know who I am now. Now this was not a brag. I know it's been blown up to be a brag in the Warren Commission. But this was not a brag. This was a man that, that uh, he was catching a building at night, you know, after it's locked. Mm -hmm. This is like, uh, uh, Somebody was trying to steal something, and you catch him at it. it was, he was uh, embarrassed about it. Or disgusted that he had, had uh, uh, blown his cover or, or, or been caught or, or something. You know, it, uh, it wasn't a brag. Calming more of the people to the south and west, maybe the wind, maybe the way it was the building, but the debris that was falling down um, didn't seem to be falling to the north. It seemed to be fa falling to the west and the south. And you could see people getting hit by it, probably getting killed by it. I don't know that we can accurately figure out how many people were killed before the building came down and how many were killed before by the things coming off the building. Did it, did it occur to you at all at that time that these buildings might actually collapse? Yeah, yeah but not the way they did. It, it occurred to all of us that they would ultimately collapse over the way buildings you know, usually collapse, which is in stages. It, 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 it looked like the, at some point the top of the building had come off and then maybe the middle of the building and then maybe there'd be a shell left and um, uh, the way, the way uh, number seven came down, four or five o'clock in the afternoon over a period of time. But the idea that it would impl the implosion that took place, I actually didn't realize that until much later because when that happened, I was in the police department command post, so I didn't see it. I heard it. I saw the result of it. The building started shaking and the desk started shaking. But I don't think I really envisioned how it happened until I saw it on television you know, many hours later. And, to, and it was a shock to see it just implode that way.